Hey, Genesis family, it is day 24 of our Lenten journey through the Gospel of Mark, and our reading today is Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 29. Jesus comes down from the mountain with Peter, James, and John, where he encounters a few things. An arguing crowd, a desperate father, and bewildered disciples. Each of them represent places that each of us may be in our faith development. First, when the people see Jesus, they are overwhelmed with joy and they run to him. And Jesus asked the crowd, what are you arguing with them about? The them is the teachers of the law who have been harassing Jesus and his disciples, seeking to find fault to discredit his ministry. They're not at all interested in who Jesus is or what he has to say or in the people he's ministering to. But the people have taken the bait of debate. They have engaged in an argument. Our world is filled with arguments, especially religious arguments. And if we're not careful, we get sucked into them. And they are fruitless in nature. And arguments often overlook the genuine real needs of real people and the real solutions to those needs. Jesus doesn't engage in the debates. He doesn't even talk to the teachers of the law, although he had done that before. He often would shut down the debates with penetrating questions and clarifying truths. Instead, he identifies a man in the crowd who has the freedom to speak, and he is desperate. His son is possessed by a demon, and it has been a self-destructive situation for his son. He has brought his son to the disciples who had gained notoriety in their ability to drive out demons in the surrounding villages, but the disciples were not able to drive the demon away. There's a note of frustration in how Jesus responds to this. He calls them a faithless generation. Perhaps he's still discussing the issues of arguments that have overlooked this situation and have ignored this man's need. Or perhaps he's frustrated with the reality of evil and how it takes people, especially vulnerable, innocent ones, into self-destructive patterns. Of course, Jesus will deal with the situation. He says, bring the boy to me. And as he talks with the father, he finds out more about the situation. This has happened from childhood. This is a vulnerable kid who has been subject to torment all of his life. As the father is talking with Jesus, he's not quite convinced that Jesus can really do anything about it. He says, if you can, could you help him? Jesus seizes on that as a situation where he can build the man's faith. He says, if you can, anything is possible to him who believes. Jesus is encouraging this desperate man to have greater confidence in God, to which the man replies, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. That is a beautiful prayer because it's a raw, honest prayer. It's acknowledging that I have a little faith, but I need your help to get to the place where I know faith should take me, which is confidence in God. This is a beautiful prayer. And Jesus responds to this situation simply by rebuking the demon and delivering the boy. It's a beautiful story of deliverance and restoration where Jesus meets a desperate man by delivering a demon and encouraging his faith. But then the disciples have questions, and in a private conversation, they ask Jesus, why couldn't we do it? They had had success before, and Jesus had given them his authority to drive out demons, but for whatever reason, though they tried, they were unsuccessful. Jesus gave them this note, this teaching, if you will, that this kind can only come out by prayer. Other translations say much prayer and some include prayer and fasting. Jesus was able to deal with this because he lived a life of prayer. It was an encouragement to the bewildered disciples that they should learn to live in prayerfulness even more 
because they will encounter situations and challenges that are not easily overcome. And that's going to require perseverance. It's going to require an enduring faith that is built and developed even as you encounter real obstacles. So friends, today's lesson revolves around where we are in our faith development. Are we among the crowds engaging in debates? Are we more interested in trying to answer questions? Are we getting sucked in to all the religious arguments and debates that are developing? Are we in the polarizing places where we are contributing to the division, which always lead to fruitless situations and more animosity? Are we in a place of desperation where we have sought God and we have not found the deliverance that we want for us or our loved ones and we're struggling in our faith and we're getting discouraged where we need to hear the words of Jesus talk to us about the possibilities of faith and where we need to be gut level honest with God that we need his help to believe? Or are we like those bewildered disciples who are struggling because the things that we have seen God do in the past are not easily done right now. We have hit a wall and we are struggling with our inability or, or, or lack of capacity to do the things that we know that we can do or should be doing. This is where Jesus invites us to a more intentional time of prayerfulness and fasting where we seek God like we've never sought God before because things don't come as easily as before. This is because God is trying to develop our faith. So friends, let's avoid the bait of debate. Let's ask God to help us grow our faith and let's bring our frustrations and our supposed failures to God and allow him to lead us into the things that will lead us to a greater measure of faith. Because what we find overarching in this story is that in the valleys there are real people who have real needs, who are counting on us as the people of God to attend to them and that we have the power through faith to see evil overcome. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for the stories of Jesus that build our faith. And we ask you, Holy God, in these moments to give us discernment about whether we are debating people and in arguments, whether with people or with ourselves that are fruitless in nature. We ask you, O holy God, to meet us in our desperations where we have sought you and are seeking you for ourselves or for our loved ones. Build our faith that we might see the possibilities and grow in our confidence. And holy God, help us to overcome our own bewilderment so that we might persevere and understand that ministry with you is sometimes a struggle that can be overcome when we live a life of prayerfulness. Help us, Lord. Help us in our unbelief. Help us overcome our unbelief. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.